Nobody can analyze data faster than Excel's pivot table. If you want to quickly find key insights about data sets, then pivot tables can get this done in no time. Imagine having a massive amount of company data and within a couple of minutes, you knew the breakdown of costs by department, compensation across the company by age group, and a comparison on year on year salary changes. This is a piece of cake for pivot tables. Let's have a look at how all of this is done. The data we're going to be analysing for this video contains various employee information for a company, like their name, age, the department they work in, their office location, along with their salary for the previous year and the current year. We're going to answer five main questions about this data set using a pivot table that will allow us to see some of the great capabilities and functionalities a pivot table is capable of. The first step is to insert a pivot table. But before we do that, we need to check our data set can pass three main checks. If you've ever tried to insert a pivot table, then gotten an error like this, it's likely because your data set isn't passing one of the three following criteria. First, we need to make sure that all columns within our data set have headers. If this isn't the case, we won't be able to insert a pivot table. Secondly, we need to make sure there are no blank columns within the data set. This is another condition that must be true or else we won't be able to insert a pivot table. Finally, we need to make sure that there are no subtotals contained within any rows of the data set. Before inserting a pivot table, let's convert our data set to a table. We can select anywhere within our data set and press the shortcut Control T. Excel automatically will recognize the data range we're interested in, so we can just click OK to confirm. This step is optional. We don't actually have to convert our data set to a table to insert a pivot table, but you will see why this has advantages a little later. After inserting the table, you will see that there's a floating tab called Table Design, already active, and in the tools group, there is a command called summarize with pivot table. So let's click this. Excel now presents us with a new dialog box asking us two questions. First, it asks us to select a table or a range in which we want to base our pivot table upon. It's already identified our current table, so we don't need to change this. The second question we're asked is where do we want our pivot table to be placed? Do we want to put it in a new worksheet, which is the default option, or do we want to put it in an existing worksheet? Let's create a new worksheet for the pivot table so we can go ahead and click OK. Our new worksheet gets created. On the left hand side, we have our blank pivot table and on the right hand side, we have a navigation panel called pivot table fields. The navigation panel is where we're going to adjust the settings of our pivot table. In other words, it's how we tell the pivot table to return the answers we need. The panel is broken up into a top and bottom section. The top section contains all of our column names from the data set, which our pivot table is based upon. We can see that we have the employee names and IDs along with their age, department, office location and the salary data. Let's call the bottom portion of this navigation panel the area section. We can see filters, columns, rows and values. How we use both the top and bottom portions of this navigation panel will become clearer in just a moment. You can move this navigation panel by clicking and dragging the header anywhere within your worksheet if you prefer to have it a little closer to you. You can also put it back to its default location by double clicking the header. The first question we're going to answer about the data set is, what is the total annual salary for each department? We can see in our pivot table fields that we have a field called department. So let's drag this field into the rows area. This now populates our pivot table with every unique department name that was contained within our data set. If we go back to our underlying data, 
we can see that there are many entries for various different departments, but the pivot table only returns the unique values. Our question asked us to return the total annual salary for each of these departments. So let's take the current salary field and drag it into the values area. This now gives us a list of the unique departments within our data set, along with the sum of salaries for each of those departments. The number formatting doesn't look too good, but we can change this by right clicking on the salary column and then navigating to number format. You can see that there's also an option to format cells. You don't want to choose this as this will format the underlying cells rather than the numbers contained within the pivot table. Now let's choose currency and remove the decimal place and click OK to confirm. So that looks a little clearer. We can also sort the output of the numerical values within the pivot table by right clicking and then choosing sort. You can choose from the largest to smallest or smallest to largest. Let's choose smallest to largest. So just with these couple of small actions, we now have exactly what we want the sum of the current salary for each department within the company. What about our next question? What is the minimum salary for each of these departments in each location? Well, right now our pivot table is showing the sum of salary, but we can change the aggregation method by navigating to the values area of the pivot table and then extending the dropdown. You will see there's an option here called value field settings. When we open this, we can change the aggregation method the pivot table is using to summarize our values. You can see we have sum, count, average, max, and min. For this question, we're interested in the minimum. So let's choose minimum and click OK to confirm. The pivot table updates and displays the minimum salary in each department within the company. But we want to find out what is the minimum salary for each department and each location. The office location is available within our data set. So if we click and drag this field into the columns area, we notice some changes happen to our pivot table. Each unique department remains in the row portion of our pivot table, but now we have each unique location also displayed. It's quite easy for us now to check any department and any location's minimum salary. Let's say we wanted to know what is the minimum salary in the south location for the risk department. There it is. At the moment, the pivot table is showing grand totals for both rows and columns, which doesn't really make a lot of sense when we're trying to analyse minimum values. This can be removed by right clicking anywhere within the pivot table and then choosing pivot table options. You will notice that there is a tab here called totals and filters. And within this tab, we have a section for grand totals. We have one checkbox to show grand totals for rows and one checkbox to show grand totals for columns. If we uncheck both of these and then click OK to confirm, we can see that the grand totals have now been removed and we're simply left with the minimum values for our departments and locations. Our third question here asks us what is the total salary for each department as a percentage of the entire company's salary bill? We only need the department and salary, so I'm going to remove the office location from the pivot table criteria. To remove a field from the pivot table, we can click and drag it outside of the pivot table field panel. Or alternatively, you can just uncheck the field you no longer need. Let's change the display of the salary back to sum rather than minimum by extending the values drop down and then again choosing value field settings, then select sum and confirm. Let's add back the grand totals as well by right clicking on the pivot table and choosing pivot table options. Back in the total and filters tab, I'll show the grand totals for columns only this time. So now we're back to where we were previously and we have our departments along with the sum of salary for each department. But how do we show these values as a percentage of the grand total? Well, if we right click on any of the values within our salary column, we'll notice that there is an option to show these values as. This brings up a variety of display methods, 
but the one we're interested in is to show these values as a percentage of the grand total. So let's choose that. Perfect. Now our numerical values have been transformed into percentages, showing each department's salary as a percentage of the grand total. And the fourth piece of information that we want to find out about our data set is what age group of employees within the company are paid the most. For this, let me change the salary column back to numerical values by right clicking on the column, then navigating to show values as and choosing no calculation. We're interested in the age group here and not the department anymore. So we can remove the department from the pivot table. Age is a field within our pivot table fields, so let's drag this into the rows area where we previously had the department. We get quite a lot of results now because our pivot table is showing us every unique age that is contained within the underlying data set and the corresponding sum of salary. Let's sort this information from smallest to largest by clicking on the salary column and then navigating to sort, then smallest to largest. You can also go one step further here. Because we have numerical values contained within the row portion of our pivot table, we can group these numerical values together. If you right click on the age column and then choose group, we get a new dialog box called grouping. Excel tells us that it's going to start grouping at the age of 21, which is the minimum age it could find within the data set and it's going to end the grouping at the age of 65, which is the maximum age. And it's going to group all of these ages by every 10 years. If we hit OK to confirm, our pivot table is reduced to only five rows, which makes things a little clearer to analyze. We can sort the pivot table based on age by right clicking on the age column and then choosing sort by smallest to largest. It's quite clear now which age group of employees overall are compensated the most, which is the 41 to 50 year olds within the company. And finally, question five is asking us which location had the largest year on year salary increase. Because we're interested in location, I'm going to remove the age from my pivot table. Remember, I'm going to click and drag the age field outside of the navigation panel. We're interested in location this time, so let's click and drag the office location into the rows area. We need to find the difference between the current and previous salary, so let's also bring the previous salary into the values area. Let's give these values some formatting by right clicking on the column and choosing number format. I'll again format these numbers as currency with no decimal place and hit OK to confirm. So now we know the current salary and the previous salary for each location within the company. But how do we visually display the difference between these two columns? For this, we need to add what is called a custom column or a calculated field. With our pivot table selected, we can navigate to the pivot table analyze tab. You will see there is a group here called calculations. And within the field items and sets drop down, we have an option for a calculated field. After choosing this, Excel brings up a new dialog box and it asks us for two pieces of information. What do we want to name this field? And what is the formula this calculation should be based upon? Let's call this field salary change, seeing as it's the difference between the current and previous salary. The formula field already has a zero inserted in it, so let's remove it. Below, we have our list of fields that Excel will allow us to use within our formula. We know we want our formula to be the current salary minus the previous salary. So first, let's click on the current salary and then click insert field so that it's inserted into the formula. Let's add a minus sign and then let's add the previous salary to our formula. Now we can hit OK and the new column has been added to our pivot table and the sum of salary change representing the difference between the current salary and the previous year's salary. We can sort all of the pivot table results based on this column if we want by following the steps we've previously seen. So I'm going to right click on the sum of salary change, 
go to sort and then sort the results from smallest to largest. Now it's quite clear which location within the company had the largest year-on-year -year salary increase. And you remember in the beginning that we converted our data set to a table before inserting a pivot table. I want to show you the advantage of taking this step. Let's say I received some additional information which wasn't part of my original data set. I can go ahead and copy this information and then go back to the original data set. If I go all the way to the bottom and then paste this information, we can see that the table expands and includes this data in what is considered the table range. Because our pivot table is based on the table, our pivot table now automatically considers this new information because the source has changed. If we go back to the pivot table, we can right click and then choose refresh. We will see all of the updates happen to include all of this new data without having to manually adjust the source. If you do have to manually adjust the source of underlying data, which our pivot table is based upon, with the pivot table selected, navigate to the pivot table analyze tab. You will notice that there is a group called data and there's an option to change the data source. Once you click on this, Excel will bring up a dialog box allowing you to change the underlying data which your pivot table is based upon. Also, if you're interested in drilling down into any of the underlying data which your pivot table is showing you, you can simply double click on the piece of information. Excel will create a new tab within your worksheet which contains all of the data rows behind the display output. For example, we can see the sum of the total salary from the status bar on the bottom right matches the pivot table result we drilled down on. One final great functionality to talk about is pivot table charts. Once your pivot table is active, we can navigate to the insert tab on the ribbon and choose a chart type to visualize our data. Let's choose the clustered column chart. This chart is linked to your pivot table. It shows now the current salary, previous salary, and change of salary for each of the departments within the company. If we change any of the information within the pivot table, our chart will also change. If I replace the department field with the office location field, you will see that the pivot chart updates to show us locations within the company rather than departments. You can also filter the office locations directly within the chart itself if you're not interested in displaying all of the results. So this is a nice, easy and flexible way to visualise your data without having to write any complicated formulas. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and you're ready to fire up Excel and get going with pivot tables. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit that thumbs up. And as always, have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time.